Okay, so far we've been looking at circuits where all the components have been in series with each other or they've been in parallel with each other. Now we're going to look at circuits where we have a mixture of both, where some are parallel and some are series, just like these two. Okay, in the circuit we'll calculate the current and PD across each component. Okay, so by looking at the circuit here, I can see that these two are in parallel with each other. So I'm going to start off by working out the total resistance of that. So 1 over 10 plus 1 over 40, and then 1 over that to get a total resistance of 8 ohms. So, the vo uh, so this whole combination has 8 ohms resistance. Okay, so now I can see because that's in series with this com uh, resistor here, the total resistance of this circuit is going to be adding up the 8 and the 16. That gives me a total of 24 ohms. Now I also had the total voltage in this. That means I can work out the total current in the circuit. So if I had the total voltage divided by the total resistance, I can work out the current, the total current in the circuit. So 12 over 24, that gives me a total current of 0 0.5 amps flowing through the circuit. So 0 0.5 amps coming out there, flowing through this resistor. However, then it's splitting up at this junction. Okay, so now that we know the current through this resistor, we can work out the voltage. So we just V equals IR. So V equals IR. I is 0 0.5 times 16. That gives me 8 volts. So 8 volts across this. Now if that's 8 volts across that, we know the rest of the energy needs to be used in, in either one of those two resistors here. So the voltage across this one will be 4 volts and this will be 4 volts. So whatever route the electrons take, they need to use a total of 12, whichever route they take. Now I have the uh, voltage across each resistor and its resistance. So I can work out the current through each route as well. So I just need to use uh, V of R to get me the current I. So in this case, so the first one we've got 4 divided by 10 to give me a current of 0 0.4 amps through that one. So through that is 0 0.4 amps. Now straight away I know it must be 0 0.1 amps through this route, but I'm just going to show you anyway. 4 volts divided by 40 ohms gives you 0 0.1 amps. Okay, and that's going to join back up again to go around this circuit like that. Okay, it's just the same resistors here, but just all, all organized in a different way here. Okay, so first of all, I noticed that this 12 volt cell is in parallel with this. Uh, 40 ohm resistor so the voltage across that will be 12 volts and it's also in parallel with this combination here so the voltage across between these two points here will be 12 volts and also the resistance between those two points you just need to add up them because uh, the resistors here because they're in series so it's 26 ohms in total so now this means I can work out the current through each branch so let's work out the current through this branch by doing V of R 12 volts over 40 ohms gives me 0 0.30 amps through this branch here. Okay, so now I'm going to do 12 volts here. So for this set up here, I'm going to do 12 volts divided by 26. So that gives me a current of 0 0.46 amps through the top branch. Okay, and then they're going to join back up to go through the cell here. So the, if you just need to add up the currents here, so if we add up the currents, we get 0.46 amps to the top one, plus a 0 0.30 amps to the bottom one, that gives us 0 0.76 amps flowing around in that circuit here. Okay, finally, we're gonna figure out the voltage, how the voltage is shared between these two resistors here. So just again, using ratios, so I'm gonna take the 12 volts chop it up in 26 pieces, multiply by 16 for the first one. That gives me 7.4 volts for the first uh, resistor here. And the remainder will be for the other one, which and if you do that, you get 4.6 volts for this one, and it adds up to 12. Okay, in the circuit below, the ammeter reads 0 0.48. So 0 0.48 amps through this ammeter. There's negligible internal resistance. Calculate the current and PD across each component and the resistance of this bulb here, which we don't know. Okay, so firstly, if I've got 0 0.48 amps of current flowing through that, that must mean the current through this is 0 
yeah, because whatever current goes through the ammeter is going through that uh, 10 ohm resistor. So I can work out the voltage across that. So the voltage across that will be the current 0 0.48 times 10 ohms. That gives me uh, 4.8 volts across this. Okay, so that means the rest of the voltage is going to be used across this and this. So, because and they're in parallel with each other, so they should have the same voltage across each other as well. So that means if you do 12 volts minus 4.8, you get 7.2 volts across each one. So 7.2 volts across this and 7.2 volts across that. Okay, now I can see I've, I know two things for this resistor here, so I can work out the current through this resistor here. So I can do 7.2, so V over R is what I'm doing. 7.2 divided by 20, that gives me 0 0.36 amps flowing through this one here. So the rest of the current needs to go through the bulb. And we know the total current in the circuit here is 0 0.48. So if I do 0 0.48 minus the current that's going through the through the 20 ohm resistor, 0 0.36, that means the total current is 0 0.12 is flowing through the bulb. Okay, now you can see we know two things about that bulb. We can work out R. R is going to equal V of I, which is in this case 7.2 over 0 0.12 and that gives me 60 ohms. Okay, in the circuit below, the ammeter reads 0 0.25 amps. The cell has negligible internal resistance. Calculate the current and PD across each component and the missing resistance over here, which is R. Okay, so firstly, it's quite, there's four components and it's arranged in a fairly complex way. But what I can do here is, because I've got the current that's flowing around in the circuit, I'm going to try to figure out the voltage across this combination by working out its total resistance. So we've got two resistors that are in series with each other, so that's 40 ohms. And we've got this one that's in parallel with that. So if I do 1 over 40 plus 1 over 24, and then 1 over that, to get a total resistance for that combination of 15 ohms. So this combination has a total resistance of 15 ohms. And the current through that is going to be 0 0.25 through that whole combination. So I'm going to apply Ohm's law to that combination there. So the uh, voltage across that combination we don't know yet because it's obviously not 5 because you've got this resistor here taking some of that. But we're going to figure it out now. So the current through that combination will be 0 0.25. The resistance of it is 15. So that gives me a total voltage to that combination of 3.75 volts. Okay, so that means this combination across here is 3.75. So the voltage across this will be 3.75 volts, and the remaining 3.75 between these two points as well, but it's going to be shared across these two in the ratio of uh, half to half. So 1 to 1, so uh, 5 volts across this, 1.875 shared evenly between these two. The remainder of, so if you take that 5 volts and we subtract 3.75 volts, from that we've got 1.25 volts going across this resistor here. So keep in mind that whatever route the, uh, the charge takes, it must have a total, use a total of 5 volts. So that's why I've shared like that. Okay, now I know the voltage across this. I also know that the current through this is the same as current that's going through the cell, so that's 0. Point 25 amps. Applying ohms law to that one, so R is going to equal V over I. 1.25 volts divided by 0 0.25 amps gives me 5 ohms resistance across that. So this R is equal to 5 ohms.